So, you know, as someone who's written just society before, so what are you most looking forward to, to going back to those characters and doing something that you can do when you were writing the comics? And well, I tell you, the thing that that's fun for me about writing the JSA, apart from the fact that I just love the characters, is I love that they're the world's first superhero team. And it's so much fun to like show the difference between the JSA, who are like storied and legendary and really like have it together, compared to the Legends of Tomorrow, who are basically a bunch of screw ups. <laughs> um, and it's it's like wow, there really are two very different kinds of superheroes or superhero teams. Uh, and that, that showing that dynamic and that, that difference is really fun and fun for us. And, uh, how are you approaching the Flashpoint? Uh, uh, Thing with the places of tomorrow. Is that going to affect your storyline very much? We don't have any sort of near term plans for it to affect us, mainly because I think, you know, with we're doing our own version of time travel and our guys are changing history on their own. Changing history on top of Barry, changing history is just, I don't think there's, we didn't find a way to do that and have it not be the most confusing thing ever. Um, so, you know, and also like our guys, they're kind of existing outside of time because they're running around. So I think you'll see the connections with the Flash later on in the season, but out of the gate, uh, it just would be just, I think, very confusing for the audience. And the first concept come about for DC Origin of Tomorrow? Basically, uh, CW had wanted another show. Uh, we talked about, about a bunch of different ideas. Um, at the end of the day, we all sort of looked around and went, wait a minute, we've got all these characters established on Flash and all these characters established on Arrow. Um, there's there's actually a show here, and, and there's not only a show, but there's an opportunity to do something that never been done before, which is no one's done an ensemble superhero show. Um, and we love, you know, doing things new, and a big component of our conversations were if you're going to do a third show, how do you make it different from the other two? Certainly doing an ensemble, a superhero team, that's that's new, that's exciting. So that's that's what, you know, we just didn't control. So, bringing in magic with Vixen, are we going to possibly see Constantine yeah, make a comeback? I'm always asking. I this. know, and I, I'm i always, you know, I'm, like, I'm a huge Constantine fan, yes. I love Matt. Uh, it, it, it would make me so, so, so happy. Um, I, no plans at the moment is the best answer I can give. Is it hard sometimes to compartmentalize, like, when you do, like, like I love the Western episode, but there was a part of me that was like, man, I wish they would stay there for, like, five episodes. Is it hard sometimes to keep it all in one? Uh, or limiting? You know, yeah, actually, like, the first two episodes all take place in 1942. Like, originally, the design of the show was, we went into it thinking, like, oh, we're going to spend, like, five episodes in the 70s, and then five episodes in the Old West and stuff, and I think it was harder to do when we had only 16 episodes yeah. um, to, to do that. Um, so we're, we're kind of, I think, transitioned to a point where we're just not dogmatic about it. It's just like, look, if we've got five episodes worth a story set in the Old West, we'll, we'll stay in the Old West for five episodes. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it totally depends upon what the, the nature of the storytelling is dictating. Can I also use that to segue into, will we see more Jonah Hex and... How much more Jonah Hex will we see? Um, you'll, uh, Jonah Hex will, will definitely be returning to the show. I'll awesome. we'll say that. Very good. Yeah. We saw Star City in the future. Yes, yeah. yeah. and I wonder if you tease a little bit maybe Central City. Is, are we seeing maybe some future cities in season two? Uh, you know, one of the things that we are trying, at, at some point we'll go back to the future, but <laughs> at some point we'll go back to the future, but um, we're not like doing it straight out of the gate. For one thing, the future is just hard to pull off from a production standpoint in a way that we haven't. We've done post apocalyptic, we've done sort of the minority report version of the future, we've done, you know, the Star City 2046. Um, it's not like we don't want to do it, but we want to find the right story and do it in the right way. The, one of the biggest, I think, uh, crazy nuts moments in a good way was Ray going giant. Size yeah. fighting a giant robot. How in the world did you get that through uh, the CW to like 
no pulled over. I mean, that, that's a um, giant scene. It, it's a massive scene. I got to give all the credit in the world goes to Armin Gorkian and his team at Encore. They pulled it off. Um, it was something, it was an idea that the writers group came up with. We knew we wanted to do an episode with a giant robot because we had teased that in our promo that launched the show. Like, we saw the big robot foot and we sort of went into season one going like, okay, well, you showed the foot, you got to show the whole robot. And the, the, writer, the writing staff came up with this idea, well, what if Ray gets big and fights the robot? And like, oh, okay, that's awesome. And there were notes calls, like, you know, we, each episode begins with us publishing what we call a story area, where we sort of tell the network and the studio, this is what we have planned, and we certainly have mentioned that. And uh, you know, to both Warner Brothers and the CW's credit, they went, I hope you can do that. Um, but they didn't say no, and they didn't say you can't do that, because I think by this point, they've got a faith in, you know, not, not I don't even want to say us, in uh, Zoic and Encore, the two houses that do visual effects across the four shows. These guys can pull off the amazing and the impossible. And, you know, the we always say, like, there's some like Honda versions of scenes and there's some Cadillac versions of scenes um, and not every scene we don't have the money for every scene to be a Cadillac and um, watch Honda will never do business with me um, <laughs> um, you know but uh, you can't like we, we went in with the super deluxe ultra Cadillac version and thought we'd tear it down yeah. and that's what you end up seeing on screen like it is every bit as big as as we didn't we didn't think we could afford it we didn't think we had the time but Encore Armin they, they pulled off a miracle on a TV show budget it was yeah. very impressive thank you